My name is Andrea with Foodimentary Adventures in Food. In my household, there's me, my husband, and our adorable two-year-old little boy. On our channel, you'll find simple and tasty dinners using everyday ingredients. So Howard is grilling pork chops and I am trying out a new side for dinner tonight. I had some red potatoes in the refrigerator that were almost at the end of their rope, so I wanted to go ahead and use it. I am making roasted garlic butter Parmesan potatoes. So in my bowl here, I have some olive oil, some black pepper, I accidentally added a little bit too much black pepper, and then I'm adding some Italian seasoning. And I'm cutting this recipe in half. I'll make sure to link it in the description box, but I'm cutting the recipe in half and uh, just added some Italian seasoning, and now I'm adding some garlic. I'm just gonna give this a little stir here. And I have some red potatoes that I peeled, I cut them, and then I parboiled them. That's what the recipe calls for. And then I'm just gonna give these a toss. And now I'm going to add in some Parmesan cheese. And I have oiled a baking sheet, and now I'm just gonna pour my potatoes on top of my baking sheet. I've got my oven preheated to 400 degrees, and I am just going to bake these potatoes for 25 minutes, about halfway through. I'm gonna kinda stir them, flip them over, and continue to bake them. Okay, so here's our dinner. Here is the grilled pork chop. Now the marinade that I used, I've had in my, or I had in my pantry for a while, and I marinated these yesterday, so I threw away the packaging for it, but it does have a good flavor. I don't even really think they make that marinade anymore. Um, and so I also made some canned corn with butter, salt, and pepper. And then here are the potatoes. Now, if you decide to make these potatoes, a couple of things I would warn uh, you about. One is that I would probably use a non-stick foil because my potatoes did stick to the foil and I lost a lot of cheese. If you don't have non-stick foil, then I would probably add my Parmesan cheese last. And the other thing is after the potatoes came out of the oven, I added melted butter and fresh parsley. And the potatoes are pretty good, but I've just got to do them again um, and just, you know, tweak the recipe a little bit. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we will see y'all next time. So for dinner tonight, we are having this pasta that I picked up from Aldi, um, actually just a couple of days ago. I had to go into Aldi and pick up a couple of things for Harrison. I didn't do a big haul, but I saw these and they are, I think like a specialty buy and they looked really good. They are like little um, pockets of pasta that are stuffed with cheese and uh, parma, I'm sorry, prosciutto and Parmesan cheese. And I had this in my pantry, I'm trying to use up what I have from HEB, and it's just a pasta sauce that actually calls for eight ounces of pasta. So this is nine ounces, so this is perfect. So I'm just going to prepare the pasta according to package directions, and then uh, stir in that salsa and sauce and get everything all heated up. Okay, so here's our dinner. The pasta and sauce are very good. I had to go back and look on my receipt. The pasta was $2.99. The sauce is very good. That's my first time having that sauce from HEB and it is pretty tasty too. And then I am serving it alongside some canned green beans. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time. So I am trying out a new recipe for slow cooker sour cream and onion chicken. And so I'm making a few changes to the recipe. Um, one of the changes that I'm making is that I'm using all regular full fat products. The original recipe calls for like um, low sodium or low fat cream of mushroom soup. I'm just using what I have in my pantry. And so I'm just using some regular cream of mushroom soup. I'm just putting it in the bowl here. Need one package of Lipton onion soup mix, and Harrison is running around, so you may hear him. And then some sour cream, and the original recipe calls for low fat sour cream. Again, I'm just using regular sour cream. And the recipe also calls for milk, I'm sorry, not milk, 
um, water. But um, a lot of the reviews that I read said people would not suggest using water and that they wouldn't use it next time. So I'm not going to add water. And I normally don't add water when I cook things in the crock pot. So I'm just gonna give this a good stir. So I've got everything all mixed up. The recipe calls for four boneless, skinless chicken breasts. I had two really large chicken breasts, so I just cut them in half. And I'm just putting the mixture on top of the chicken. And then it says, let it cook on low for about six to eight hours. I don't think it'll need six to eight hours because it's just four chicken breasts, but we shall see. So here is dinner all plated up. I'm serving it with some green beans on the side, white rice, there's a chicken. Let me show you the crock pot. Um, lots and lots of gravy in here. And like I said, the recipe calls for you to add water, actually a cup and a half of water. And um, I didn't add any water, as I said, and there's tons and tons of gravy. I would not add water if I were you, because I think it would just water it down a lot. Um, but anyway, it's pretty tasty, I do have to say. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we will see y'all next time. So for dinner tonight, we are eating from our freezer. In my freezer, I have these Johnsonville tur turkey smoked sausages and these hot links from Brahms. Brahms is an ice cream um, and hamburger place around here in Texas. I know they have them in Oklahoma. Not sure where else they have them, but they also have a little market and you can buy meat, cheese, things like that. So that's where these hot links are from. And I absolutely love them, been eating them since I was young. And so here is my plate hot link um, with some mustard and then cheese puffs. And then this is Howard's plate. He's got the cheese puffs. He's got a hot link right here. He put shredded cheese on it and avocado. And then he has a turkey dog with ketchup and avocado. And then here are the cheese puffs that we are eating. They are from HEB. I did a grocery haul recently and I picked these up and I'll link that in the description box in case you all wanna check it out. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time. So for dinner tonight, I am making spaghetti. I am trying to do a better job of using up stuff that I have. So I have probably half a jar of this, um, let me show you, this Classico tomato sauce, uh, pasta sauce that I use for my stuffed peppers, stuffed sausages, excuse me, in the fridge and I wanted to use it. So in my pot here, I have uh, browned some ground beef, onions, and bell pepper. I have some Italian seasoning in there. As you can see, I just added in that pasta sauce. And then I'm going to add in a can of diced tomatoes. And a can of stewed tomatoes. And I'm gonna put a little water in this jar to get that sauce out of there. And I'm just gonna let this simmer and, and thicken up. Okay, so here's our dinner. This is my plate. I have a bunch of Parmesan cheese on top, serving it with some mini croissants from Trader Joe's. And you all have heard me talk about these a lot. I love these things. I did let them proof this time. Last time I forgot. Um, and then this is Howard's plate. He does not like Parmesan cheese on his spaghetti. So anyway, this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time.